Hey guys, welcome back. So, we've got us a little line boring project. It's not too terrible. But you can see it's definitely not round. So, we're going to get it all set up, do some clean cuts, weld it out. It's probably going to take two, two or three passes of weld and then uh, cut its size. See what, see what the apprentice is doing over here. <laughs> That's going to be quiet for you. Like he's learning how to do a push block. So we've got our bar, we've got our centering cones, we've got our locking rings with these screws, and you basically just put it all on there, you tighten these um, rings, and you tighten the screw, and it will push, so you can see that, this, the ring stays in place, and it pushes against this alignment cone, and then it um, helps to, to get the bar really, really close. These aren't necessarily exact, especially on a bar that's not perfectly round. So you do have to adjust the bar after you get it set. This is how you basically get your bar set and, the, and then the bar is now rigidly mounted so that you can put your bearings on here and then get them tacked.
So I've never tried a button style insert for this. I'm gonna try it, see what happens. You never know. Could be good, could be bad. All right, a couple days later, I got sidetracked the other day. Seems to happen a lot. So we've got our, our bore cut out, which I think it looks pretty good. I'll show you a close-up of that here in a minute when I pull the bar out. But I did want to say that this, I was making about a 3 16th, one pass, 3 16th to, to clean the bore up. There's just a tiny bit right there that didn't get clean, but that's not gonna be an issue. I don't know if I'm gonna use this again or what, but I am relatively impressed with, with how it worked. It's got a little bit of chatter in there, you can see, but it, it worked better than I thought. So I don't know, we'll see what happens with that. I just wanted to say say something about that and. There's the numbers on it. If you guys want to try it, I have no idea where I got it. Maybe eBay. I don't remember. All right, so the next step in the line boring process. So we have our clean cut. So we have the, the drive off and I'll try to do this with one hand. So now we have to do the alignment for the bore welder. So this goes on here. It's a tight fit. And then we have our aluminum alignment block. So I kind of like to set it about right there, just slightly. Just barely touched, snug that. Kind of, yeah, not, not enough snug. I'm gonna have to use two hands. So. I'm gonna put you in my fancy phone holder that I made. The advertised magnetic mounts on Amazon and whatnot. Uh, don't seem to work where the crap so lifting magnet with whatever the hell that is all right
Okay, now that that's done, we can pull the bar out, but you can't over tighten the clamp on this, or believe it or not, it will make that bearing housing shrink a tiny bit because you still have to pull that bearing out. I'm going to show you how to do that. We'll go set this somewhere safe. All right, so in order for the bore welder to have enough room to do its job, we need to remove this bearing from this housing. So Climax gives you this tool, which I feel like is a little bit flimsy. I have already bent mine, but it hasn't necessarily broke off yet. One thing to note on the newer Climax, newer meaning um, not, not as used bearing bearings, they are very tight coming in and out. So once you get them apart, I would recommend anti-seize. That seemed to has helped me a lot. Seemed to have helped me a lot. And then you wanna kinda line it up with, there's grooves right here. Line it up with the grooves, comes right up. So after you do that, now you can fully tighten this screw here making this bar so that it, it can't move because believe it or not this will actually squeeze that just enough to where you can't get that bearing out and if you're not paying attention it could be a real pain in the butt look of uh, bearing out it's got chatter in there but for a 3 16 depth of cut I can't complain I only had to make one pass to clean that up so let's get the rest of the welder set up Funny joke, Climax welding gloves. How much? Uh, how much you guys think those cost? <clears throat> I don't even use them. All right, so we're gonna use the short extension. I think this is a number. I don't know. It's the second one up. Second one over. I will say, I think one of the things I don't like about the Climax welder, which I'm sure they have a good reason for doing it, the next size up has a removable nozzle, so I can unscrew that screw and back on. The two smaller sizes, they're soldered on, so you can't change them out. You have to literally buy the whole thing. Climax control box here. We're going to start running all of these wires. Connect it. Connect it to that. So we've got power supply. Bore welder. A 
label it right there. Gas for the welder. That's not gonna go on there. Water. This goes. Here. All right, so right now, the only way I can run this bar welder is with it hooked up to the remote port on my 600 until I get an XMT to run in the shop. So it's kind of a pain in the butt having to run it off the truck when I'm out of the shop, but that's, that's the way I have to do it right now until I get an XMT. So we've got this all hooked up, all powered on. We're going to push the wire jog button and wait for wire to come out right here. So we've got wire. Now we're gonna go ahead and put this on. wire jog again okay got wire all right so once you got your wire just leave a little tiny bit slide this in 
but you need to make sure that you have enough play travel to uh, to weld. So it'll be it'll be borderline. So we're going to uh, retract. I'm sorry. We're going to extend the bore welder all the way in. Okay. So now I have this much travel, but I only have to weld something that big. I like lining up this bar kind of like straight. So when the bore welder hangs on there, it kind of naturally finds a center point. And I think it makes it easier for lining up. There might be another process for lining this up, but this is the way that I do it, it seems to work pretty good. And I am still relatively new to the Climax gear, so I am not claiming to be a professional expert on this. So I, I get it close, a little bit past, so that way I can back it back in. And then we'll adjust this. So you basically just run it around in a circle until it looks even and you get it uh, so that it's just not touching that. And I always like starting with the, with the wire straight down. You'd, never a good idea to start, you know, like halfway up an uphill weld. So after that's set, make sure that's tight. And then something I feel it is important after the wire has been in there, and done circles, it's more prone to wire flip and things like that. So we're going to wire jog, wire out. See, look at that. See that curl? I'll show you in a second. So we're gonna jog out a couple feet of wire. We're gonna cut it off. But that, that curl right, right there on the end, that's what I'm talking about. If you started to weld with that, it could potentially cause some issues. You just want a nice curl coming out of there. So, need to cut this back just a little bit more. Then we're gonna retract. Right until it looks like it's gonna hit. We're gonna hit the purge button. Make sure we got gas. We're gonna double check our settings. Make sure that uh, everything looks correct. And on the machine we have well, 18.7, somewhere. Somewhere around there is what I want. As soon as it starts welding, I might make some, some fine tune adjustments. So I, there's a slight wind breeze, so instead of Trying to just run it without covering it up. I'm going to put a blanket on it to help the wind, to help block the wind so I don't get frosty.
yeah, let's, uh, we're going to let it sit here and weld the whole thing out. Probably take about 20, 25 minutes to weld that whole, whole thing up. Then I'll bring you guys back and show you. All right, we got our first pass done. So we're gonna we'll clean the nozzle, we'll wire wheel that, and then we'll we'll get a second pass in there. I'm not sure if it's gonna take two or possibly even three passes to get that built back up to where we need to be. All right, we got welds cleaned up one nice thing about the climax bearings coming out you could holy crap there went the saw blade um, you could slide bearings and bushings and pins through here to kind of you know see how they fit so obviously we've got uh, a little more a little more weld to do there but it's kind of a cool thing. You could slide it in there. Like the BRS setup I had before this, not talking shit on them at all because it was a good setup. But you know, the way that their bearings were set up, you, there's no way you could take this, slide it through there to check it. So, all right, I'm gonna get the setup, run this back forward and uh, get layer number two in there. Number two. Well, probably gonna need one more for sure. Get this one cleaned up, get another one going. There's the second pass cleaned up. Round three. All right, turns out three layers is enough. So as you can see, this side came out. Um, so when you're doing this, you want the weld to come out past a little ways. That way you can cut it back. And it'll make a really nice machined look. So on this side, it needs a little bit more. And it doesn't matter what type of setup you have, 
the side that you start on, most likely sometimes you will have where it starts in a little bit. So you'll have to manually touch that up with the welder and then you can machine it back out. One more thing on the BW3000, when, you, when you're done with it and you want to put it away, you always want to line up this face and this face, otherwise it won't fit in the foam. So you always want to, boom, line that up right there, then you're good to go. Look at that, freaking anesthes. Ugh. Well, we'll try the button insert again. See how it works for a cleanup cut on the welds. Some of you might want to know how I do my tool adjustments. So I've used micrometers to measure the OD of my bushing, which is that number. So I took off five thousandths for a crush fit, divide that in half, get this number minus half of the bar, 1.125, and that will give you how far the tool bit tip would need to stick out from the bar if it makes a full rotation that's how far or that that would be the correct size so from the very very tip of your insert if it makes a full rotation that would be the correct size so if you can if you assume your bar has no deflection which if you're only taking a couple thousandths on a pass, it would be very minimal to none, especially with a two and a quarter bar. So you simply turn it on, touch the bar, make sure there's no debris in there, zero it, move it back up until it's touching touching the tool bit holder. Now we need 0.62625. So I'm going to lock this one and then we'll simply just 0.6625. Just 
two, six, one, two. Oh, it only goes five. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, six, two, six. All right. Oh, that's the most we're going to get. Point six, two, six, five. So that's, so I'll do that, but I'll have a slight upper pressure on the tool and then I'll lock it in and then I will unlock this and move it all around and touch different parts of the tip of the tool and uh, confirm that that is correct. That's, so that's how I do that.
Ran out of stroke. Got it reset. Flush there, almost flush there. So now it's flush. All right. Put all this junk away. All right, well, we're all done with this. Got the bush pressed in, ready to go back to the customer. Um, they'll deal painting it if they want to do that. So, wanted to go over a couple things. Here's some miscellaneous um, tools that I keep with me for line boring. Here's the I would say these are the most common ones. So this is the one from BRS. I like this one because of the angle. This one is from Climax. This one is a universal one. And then here's a, not a universal, but just one that I got off of Amazon probably. And here's one the uh, button insert one. So those are what I use a lot. And, um, measuring tools you got these climax calipers so you could reach around the bar and go into the bore they're nice but they are a little finicky you got to kind of learn how to use it and then you saw how to use the climax bore measure tool and then obviously everybody knows what those are so those are kind of the measuring tools that i use and yeah so thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one.